Good morning. So this is going to be the first presentation on, of the work streams that we are developing under the work plan of our WASH working group of the GTFCC. It's a bit of a technical one. I didn't go too much in details. I'm more interested in showing a little bit the way we approach it. I would like to have us to have some time to maybe have an active discussion here in the room, but also to interact with people who are attending remotely through the, the chat, which is moderated by my colleagues. So my name is Justine Hag. I'm the WASH focal point to the Secretariat of the GTFCC. So I'm part of the cholera team of the WHO HQ at Geneva. Um, this presentation will be addressing the topic of WASH data. WASH data is very relevant to most of our work in many different ways. I will not be able to cover it all. So what I will do is just to present very, very briefly the content of our concept note that we prepared and summarize the various steps that we have envisioned to develop this work stream over a few years. So this is the first slide of the presentation on WASH data. So the first question we have to ask ourselves is why do we have such a work topic like WASH data? What is the purpose of this work? So I would say the first one that we need to take into account, and this is also returning to the fact that WASH is a very expensive sector, is that we are accountable of what we are doing, accountable not only to the recipients of the project, but also to the funders and donors of the project. So we need to show how much we are achieving, not only in terms of results on the ground, uh, how many structures we put in place, how many infrastructure we build or services, but also in how much this has been costing. Also, we need to align our projects and our programs with other frameworks, like for example, the Agenda 2030 with the Sustainable Goals for Development. This, of course, is relevant for the WASH sector with SDG 6, but it's also relevant to other SDGs such as health, environment, etc. As we all know, because I think most of us have had a past of, of project manager, uh, this also helps us steering uh, our projects and monitoring progress so that we can evaluate them down the line and know how well we succeed or how bad we failed in implementing our, our intentions on the ground. But if we go more specifically to initiatives that are relative to, to cholera control and elimination, I think you're all aware of the fact that we're not working countrywide. We really try to focus on cholera hotspots within countries. And there is a, a various methodologies that exist to identify those cholera hotspots, but certainly they are based on epidemiological data. But WASH data have an impact on either defining their priority of intervention or of defining what we will do in terms of WASH or how important is WASH against other pillars of the cholera st strategy. Then something that will be also developed later today, WASH data is very relevant to plan for the development of, of national cholera control plans because we need to know exactly how bad is the WASH infrastructure, how, how difficult is it to provide adequate services to calculate where they to know identify where they should be implemented and how and how much they will cost. Also, uh, something that is maybe less relevant for wash people, uh, we need to have wash data to define the risk of cholera outbreak. This is a process that is happening very commonly at WHO with the rapid risk assessments when we have an event, and we need to see okay how likely is cholera to occur or not. And of course, for us and for other partners, we need to know uh, what we want to do where in an area, and certainly also with whom, which is a question that we tend to not ask ourselves often enough or well enough. And some people in the room will probably be happy to hear this. This also should inform us on which topic we want to produce research on for it to be relevant not only for the sake of the research, but to be applied on the ground and have an impact on people's lives. So the current approach that we developed within our group, and this is of course all open to discussion, is that we have a twofold, uh, let's say, work stream uh, development. First, the WASH database or the WASH data repository. So basically, the box in which we will put our WASH data. So it is, quite a technical topic. Not everybody is a database specialist or a database developer. 
But of course, watch database need to have a proper, well-defined structure. It's not that you can just, it's a box where you can just throw everything in and it's gonna sort itself out. It's not like that. Uh, also, we need to define how this database or these databases will be managed. So how data will be fed into it, updated, how will people access it, and how can we share the data with export and import procedures. And something that is very, very technical, we need to develop a data model, ideally before we start mounting it all together. Of course, we will build up on existing, so we'll get inspiration from existing data models. And then how to take existing data and feed it into the data model and how to produce new data that we don't, don't have yet. So this is also a topic that we will uh, see into more details over the coming days. This is data, watch data acquisition tools and methodologies. So it's the way we go on the ground, look at things, gather the data, and then feed it into the model. So it looks pretty simple like that which is great, and of course, once you start doing it, you realize that you have a few issues that you need to tackle, but I guess we all like that. So the expect expected outcomes are pretty simple. First, we need uh, a standardized approach. Why? Because there's many, many actors in the WASH sectors, and everybody has the feeling they have a special way to work it because they know best. Well. I can understand, I think we all have that feeling, but we need to have at least a few things that we agree upon so that we can merge our data, exchange it, and that we can all use it and we can share it. So it's for us to have applicable data and opera operational, operationalized data that will allow us to effectively plan and develop cholera control activities. But also we need those data to be comparable so that we can all identify and prioritize areas of intervention, progress, uh, do our progress reporting, so RBM, and assess and evaluate our impacts regarding cholera control. So here what we try to do, because we, we are sometimes pretty good at formulating a vision, but we need to also define what are we going to do this coming year, and between then and, and 2030, for example, 2030 being not only the, the SDG framework uh, deadline so far, and also being the, the time horizon for our cholera roadmap. What we want is WASH data to be available to GTFCC partners and pot potentially a lot of other actors and used to support planning and implementation of cholera control and elimination activities. This is something that we want for sure to have achieved by 2030, ideally before, but let's say latest then. So then we tried to define some uh, staggered objectives for 22, 23, and 24. For 24, we want this data repository to be used by the partners and to be fed by standardized WASH assessments that are uh, conducted in cholera affected context. For 2023, we want this data repository to be available and to, be, to have this feeding mechanism. We want to have a plan for collaboration on acquisition of WASH data by the partners and to publish a technical note on WASH assessments based on the experiences that we will have done this year. So for this year, we want a, a WASH data repository for which an architecture has been defined and approved by the partners. And we want to test our assessment tools and evaluate them. So in more details for this year, this is what we would propose. Define a data model and a data catalog, including the metadata, so when has it been collected by whom and so on, the data that is not purely WASH data, but it's very relevant for us to understand the life of the data. We want to define requirements in terms of data protection. This is a topic that uh, arose from our discussions. Uh, data will come from various partners, sometimes NGOs working on the ground, uh, sometimes it will come from very sensitive facilities like refugee camps and so on. It might contain uh, identities of people that are uh, interviewed or, or surveyed. This can be very sensitive, including during, due to the political context, but this is a topic that we need to address, and I think we need to address it all together. 
Then we need to align with the existing databases. We are not starting from scratch. There's a lot of data. Uh, we can think of the joint monitoring program uh, between UNICEF and WHO. We need to start there so that we are sure that we can capitalize on all the existing and that we can, uh, we can exchange data. Then another topic is to assess the feasibility of having the a geographical disaggregation that is more in line with, with the cholera hotspots. As we know, cholera hotspots are not countrywide. They're, they're at, let's say, admin level two. Maybe even the district level is already too broad, knowing that now the JMP data is mostly uh, available at aggregated um, national level is probably not ideal for us. This is, <coughs> let's say, an institutional discussion that needs to be held. We know that the data is collected at local level, so it could be theoretically available at local level too, but we need to define how feasible this is to be achieved. Of course, review and collect WASH data sets or review uh, uh, inventories of WASH data that are already existing, uh, considering that we need to uh, assess data at national level, but also look at specific context, refugee camps, IDP gatherings, uh, schools, healthcare facilities, and others. And of course, the data custodians, they need to be on board. Who is the owner and who is the manager of those data sets? We need to sit with them, understand how they are working, how we can collaborate, and so on. And uh, worth noting, it's not just uh, international uh, aid business. Governments have their own management information system. Uh, they have a lot of data. They need to be on board at <coughs> national level and possibly to have some representative for the global discussion too. So of course, inventory, gap analysis, we all know the drill. And then, uh, as quickly as possible, try to integrate our WASH data with existing data, which is mostly ep epidemiological, so that we have a cholera database that would involve at <coughs> least epi data and WASH data. And this is already quite an ambitious goal for 2022, but I'd be very interested to have uh, your take on it. For the second part, we would like to test and evaluate WASH assessment tools that uh, have been or are being developed in various cholera contexts to see if we need to adapt them or if they are uh, fit for purpose. Compare the various approaches, produce lessons learned. That's also uh, one of the objectives of uh, 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 an organization as such as the GTFCC and see how we can uh, capitalize on work done by others that are not necessarily on board here, the World Bank, the World Food Program, and so on. And of course, as usual, formulate recommendations for the following year and, and beyond it. So now we drafted a vision for 2030. We have quite a few ideas what to do in 2022. But what are the first little baby steps that we need to take as of today? First, uh, to mobilize the resources that we already have. I would say currently it's mostly brain cells. Uh, we need first need to have an idea uh, what we want to do before we look if we need additional funds, for example, to do so. This quite ambitiously set for April 2022, so tomorrow. Identify uh, steps and tasks that will need to be outsourced. I think we all know the problem. We are full of good intentions. We are interested by our topics, but we are always in meetings. We have last minute requests. We rarely have the time that we need to really uh, give it some thought. So we might need to out outsource some of those tasks. And certainly organize initial meetings with data custodians. Uh, so first, maybe to look at the, the standard and, and uh, well-known suspects, WHO, UNICEF, and so on, but maybe to try to really have a broad view on this and, and talk as many people as possible. And of course, uh, keep the GTFCC, the WASH Working Group, and everybody regularly informed on, on what decision and what steps, steps we have taken so that we can collect feedbacks in a timely manner. So that would be it for me. Um, I'd be interested to have a few reactions from people here or from online participants.